How you doing? I'm Darren with Ash Kick and Barbecue. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today we are talking about the Cook Shack, the Fast Eddie, the FEC 100. That's right, this thing is an absolute beast. It's been on my list of pits to get for a very long time made in America. And we're gonna go through this entire thing and do the burn off today. I'm gonna tell you all about it. So let's jump in and get right to it. All right, so the FEC 100, this thing is beautiful. It is stainless steel, it's insulated. So we're just gonna kind of go through this and how you see this is pretty much how I got it. I'll put a little picture up of how it looked when I had it loaded onto my trailer because I went and picked it up. And you'll have to forgive me, it is about 30 degrees out today. It's chilly, we've been in the 50s and this 30 degrees feels frigid, even though it's February in Minnesota, it's beautiful. But the nice thing about this thing is with its insulation, it's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna go through all the specs, we're gonna go through the burn off, we're gonna go through everything. So everything you see is pretty much how it is. I haven't done much to it. Uh, we'll just open it up and take a look here. So right there is what we're working with. We have one, two, three, four grates right here with an additional room for three more that you can purchase extra if you so choose. We have our drip pan, we have our fire pot with our auger, and they were even so kind. I did open this up just to see what was in there. We have some of their signature barbecue sauce. We have their rib rub. We have the spicy chicken rub. We have the brisket rub, and we have the chili mix. So I'm looking forward to trying all of these. I like trying new rubs. They all look and sound pretty good, judging by the ingredients on there. So that's kind of what is included in there. And then up here, get this out. This is your grease pan that fits underneath down here. Inside, you'll find some materials. So we're gonna kind of go through this and just see what it's all about. I'm gonna put this in down right now. Just like that. And I kind of like that you can put an aluminum foil tray in there if you want just to keep that nice, but it is nice and big. You can pull it out and clean it. So for now, I'm gonna get this closed back up. All right, right here we have the operator's manual. We have a little cookbook from them. So really cool that they included that. Then your guarantee registration all that so very nice oh i also got two bags of pellets that came with it which is awesome some hickory pellets so we're just going to go through and just kind of read and see if there's anything we have to know so it says the maximum capacity on this is 100 pounds pork butts 80 pounds brisket 60 pounds ribs or 24 whole chickens about three pounds per load yeah it fits a ton of meat so it goes through the IQ5 controller in here, which we're going to do when we start this up. You can get a probe to put in there, kind of set your temps, whatever else. It's got troubleshooting guide, warranty, limited warranty is two years for parts only, pretty standard. And you can get parts for this thing. So, I mean, you'll be able to run it forever. That's the nice thing about these is they will run forever. You have your wiring diagram if you have any issues with the wiring. So yeah, everything's pretty simple here, looks good operating instructions yeah for easy cleanup heavy duty foil can be used to line the grease shield in your smoker so you can do that line the bottom of your smoker with foil so you can still access the drain hole yeah everything looks really pretty simple here yeah so pretty good this is like i said super easy this is your hopper right here open that up very simple, I believe it's a 20 pound hopper. Looks like they ran some pellets in there just to make sure it fired. Obviously love when companies make sure their products work before shipping it out the door. That's something you don't get with mass produced, uh, you know, not made in America cookers. So I'm gonna bring you in and we're gonna show you this control panel. We'll get some pellets in here and we'll fire it up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this hopper loaded up with pellets. Just get that open. See right here, we have the Cook Shack pellets. These are the hickories. And we're just gonna fill up this hopper. And it should hold this entire bag. There we go with some room to spare in here too, but that is the whole bag of pellets right there. So I'm gonna bring you in and show you what we're looking like right here in this hopper so far. All right, so here's the hopper. You can see we still have some room for some more pellets. That's how I'm filling it up today. Looks real good. Now at 250 degrees, this cooker uses 0.75 pounds per 
hour. So it's very insulated, does a wonderful job. So now we're gonna get this thing fired up. All right, so here's our controller right here for the IQ5 control system. We have a spot for a USB drive. We're able to download our cooking information up to 512 hours worth of data. We have a spot for our meat probe here. I will be picking up one of those. I don't have one now. And this is our master on off switch. These spots right here are all presets. So say you have a preset that you wanna do for chicken, you can put it under one, brisket two, pork three, ribs four, et cetera, et cetera, and just kind of run down the line. So we'll turn on our master on switch here. And I know this screen's gonna be kind of hard to read with the daylight that we have going right here. So it's kicked on. Now we're gonna to go to our smoke and it's automatically set at four hours. We're just gonna hit okay. And it's set at, preset at 180. We're gonna bump that up to 225. Hit okay. And then we are going to hit start. It's kicking on, it's gonna start feeding pellets. We're gonna start dumping into the pot. And we're just gonna let this thing burn off at 225 for about an hour. So let's talk about this cooker a little bit more why it's coming up to temp here. All right, so while we're waiting for that to do its thing, like I said, it's a 100 pound capacity between all these shelves. Like I said, we can get three more. If you use rib racks, you can fit a ton of ribs on this thing. The cooking area on this is 1,564 square inches or 11 square feet. And the temperature range is from 130 to 400 degrees. The shipping weight is 415 pounds. And like I said, the fuel usage is 0.75 pounds of pellet per hour at 250 degrees. This is double walled construction surrounding 850 degree Fahrenheit spin glass insulation so this is an absolute tank it's going to be fantastic for the winter it's going to be fantastic all year long at my house i cannot wait to use this thing like i said the best part about this is this is how it came it came ready to go and i love that there was no setup no prep or anything like that and because of that 850 degree spin glass insulation it provides a superior heat retention and fuel savings between the double layers of the fec 100's body so that means your energy cost is going to stay down because the smoker is not constantly reheating due to heat loss and it's dependable in all climate conditions. Now I know you're probably wondering what's the price point on this and on their website it's $5,999. Yes it is a huge investment but I personally know people that have had these pits for over 20 years and they're still running strong so this is another one of those American-made lifetime pits. Granted you're spending a lot of money on that initial investment but it's going to last you for your entire life. And if you cook a lot at home or cook for a lot of people, I highly recommend looking into this strictly for the sheer capacity. Now, right here is where we have our thermometer that's gonna give us our temp readings, which I love. It's shielded, so no grease is getting on there. We're not gonna have to sit and clean that all the time. Our fire pot is down here. We have a chute, we have a little heat deflector, and then a grease tray here. This is what they said you could line with aluminum foil, and then also put some down here, just poking a hole for your grease to fall through, just so you have a little bit easier cleanup. I'm gonna give you a little walk around of this thing here now. All right, so just walking around here, you can see we have some very heavy duty casters here. I mean, these are not the cheap little ones that are gonna fall apart. This is our grease tray right there. It's removable for easy clean ice. There's your exhaust. And I've seen some people, they put little removable elbows on here just in case you have the wind blowing in here. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not, but yeah, that's the exhaust right there. So very nice. Coming around to the backside here, just no unnecessary anything. It's just a beautiful cooker, shining like a new copper penny. I mean, that is fantastic come in here you can kind of see the smoke time remaining what we're set at so the oven temp is at 34 degrees right now like I said it's cold out we had it open it's just warming up but yeah absolutely fantastic I'm gonna open it up and just give you a close-up of the inside and then we'll make sure we get this thing locked down so it's going so we're starting to smoke in there a little bit which is great a little drain for any debris and then you have your grease shield here it's going to come down into this hole and flow down into that into this little guy right here so very very nice setup it's just fantastic and this is right here is where that thermometer is so really nice setup i'm going to get this shut down and let it get up to temp and then i'll bring you back and show you how it's looking so we'll see you in a few minutes all right one thing i am going to do here is just spray a little pam in there just for some seasoning I don't know if it's necessary, but it's something I like to do with all of my cookers. Just gonna get that all on there. Nothing crazy, so we can start that seasoning process. All right, so like I said, nothing crazy, just getting a little bit in there. Get this sealed up. 
we're just gonna let this thing fire up and do the burn off on it. All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but we have some smoke rolling, it's starting up and this is very exciting for me. I have wanted one of these pits for a very, very long time and just the fact that I have one here now, I'm doing the burn off on it, I get to share it with you guys. This is so awesome for me and I hope you learn a lot and like I said, this cooker is the real deal. I mean, it is, it's awesome. If you're looking for something that can handle just a ton of meat, you have a huge couple parties a year, whatever, or you just like cooking a lot for friends and family, right here, this thing is fantastic. So I'm just gonna let this keep getting up to temp and I'll let you know how long it takes to get up to that initial 225 degrees. All right, so we're sitting at about 90 degrees in there right now. It's been about 15 minutes. Keep in mind that auger had to prime, so that took a little longer, but now that it's primed, I expect the startup time to be even quicker. I can feel the heat coming out of here. It smells wonderful, the smoke, the pellets. Oh, this cooker's awesome. But let's talk a little bit about this cooker right here. I'm gonna bring in and show you the controller here again. And we're just gonna talk about like the three stage setup that we can run. And my glasses are fogging up because of the heat coming out of here. So you know the thing's running. So let's bring you in quick. All right, so explaining the process here for this example, we're gonna use a pork butt. So say I have my pork butt, I want it to smoke low and slow, say 180 degrees for two hours just to get some good saturation of smoke flavor on there. We're gonna hit our smoke mode, we're gonna drop down to two hours, set it at 180 degrees, and then we're going to set our cook temp to 250 degrees. So after that two hours at 180, it'll bump up to 250 and cook. If you have that probe inserted, you can set your temperature at 206 degrees or whatever you like your butts to be tender at, and then you can do your rest. So once it hits that temperature, it's automatically gonna kick down to, you know, say 150 degrees and it's gonna hold it there. So it'll be holding it there. It's never gonna overcook it. And there is no Wi-Fi with this. And to be honest, I don't really think you need it just because this thing is so advanced and it truly is just a wonderful cooker. And so I've only cooked on a few of them. I've cooked on an FEC 120 and a 240 and they were older models. I believe they were the IQ4 control system. So I'm still learning this system right here and obviously in future videos if I learn more I'll be able to provide you updates but that's my understanding of it so far like I said we're just doing the burn off today I'll have a cook video coming soon and I guarantee I'm gonna learn a lot more uh, the people over at cook shack have been wonderful talking to them via email so I'm confident I can reach out to them with any questions I've heard nothing but positive things about their customer service and I'll tell you right now a lot of money has been won on cook shacks in competition over the years they are just freaking awesome cookers so I know I'm gonna love this thing I'm geeking out right now we're sitting at 157 degrees it's been 20 minutes it's coming up to temp and that's pretty quick considering how insulated this cooker is so I'm gonna let this go I'll bring you back when it hits 225 and let you know how long it's been but I just wanted to give you a little bit of rundown of this thing so it's just I'm in love I'm in love with this thing all right so 24 minutes is what it took to get up to 225 degrees. It's nice and warm right here. Like I said, it's a little chilly out today. I mean, it's February and it's 30 some degrees here in Minnesota, but we just had a couple 50 degree days. So this feels a little chilly, but nice and warm right here next to the exhaust. I'm gonna let this thing go for probably about another 30 minutes or so, 35 minutes, and then we're gonna bump it up to, I think we're just gonna bump it up to 300. I just wanna slowly warm this thing up. We'll bump it up to 300, let it go for a half hour, 45 minutes, and then it'll be seasoned up and ready to cook. I'll show you the inside, but I can't wait to cook on this thing. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is maybe a pork butt. Might do it overnight. I'm not sure yet, maybe some ribs. Who knows, but you're gonna see it. I'm gonna film it, because I gotta film my first cook on this thing, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this thing keep going and uh, I'll bring you back in about 35, 40 minutes when it's time to bump this thing up to 300 and we'll see how it does getting up to 300. But yeah, I mean, this thing is, it's not hot. It's very nice, very nice cooker. So we'll see you guys in about 40 minutes. All right, so the FEC 100's been running at 225 degrees for almost two hours. I was getting some other stuff done, just let it kept going. We're gonna bump it up to 300 degrees now and let it go for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and it should be done. I'm just gonna open this up so you can see what it looks like inside right now. We have some wonderful seasoning going on right here. Some good smoke out footage coming. Nice patina on here. So I'm gonna get this sealed back up, bump it up to 300 and we'll let it go 45 minutes and I'll give you my kind of final thoughts on this thing. 
And one thing I want to mention is when you start this up, you want to start it up on smoke mode and start it at 180, let it pre-warm that way, then you can adjust your temp up or down. Uh, smoke mode is going to be for your lower temps, like I said. The manual says if you're going to go above 180, then you might want to go over to the cook mode, but I think we're okay at 200, 225. It's just going to get more smoke putting out. Cook mode, you're going to have a little less smoke the way the system operates, but either way, it's going to be fine. I just wanted to stress when you first start it up, start it up at 180 degrees, let it warm up that way, then adjust to however you want to cook. But kind of did things a little backwards. Should have read the manual a little bit better before we got into it. But we have it set at 300. We're going to let it go for about 45 minutes. I'll bring you back, give you my final thoughts. But this thing has been absolutely awesome. And I can't wait to cook something on it probably tomorrow. And you'll see the video shortly after this one drops. So we'll see you in 45 minutes. All right. So the FEC 100 has been running at 300 degrees for about 45 minutes. Flawlessly, I might add. You can see still nice and seasoned. Looks great. Nice smoke output even at the higher temperatures. So you have the ability to run hot and fast if you so choose. But yeah, this thing has been flawless. It's just, it's cool to the outside, which I love. Nobody's gonna get burnt on it if you got kids or pets. So if you're interested in one of these, I'll have a link down below, check it out. Start saving your pennies because this is definitely a bucket list cooker. And I look forward to showing you some cooks on it. You guys will see the first cook ever on this. I'm not gonna cook off camera. I wanna learn together with this and show you how awesome and just versatile this cooker is. So we're gonna have quite a bit of content coming on it in 2024. I'm really looking forward to showcasing this cooker on my channel. Channel. It's a huge honor. It's a dream of mine. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, stay safe, and we will see you next time.